街角提的意外，像彼此的阻碍，控制对你的依赖。琥珀树木的掩盖，把欢呼声承载，打造最好的状态。风吹过的颜色。Everybody, I hope this video finds you well. Today, I want to talk about the United States as a United States citizen and somebody who's lived there extensively. I uh, continue my narrative describing the many, many layers of lies that the United States is founded upon. And one of them is the idea that America may have social economic classes, but it's really a land of equality where everybody lives in this kind of free loving democracy. Most Americans know that that's a lie, but I'm just going to spell it out to you. Codified in law, the United States has classes. There are nine classes of people in the United States, nine of them. The most common classes, of course, are the um, excuse me. The most nine. The most. <laughs> oh God. 
the most uh, commonly understood belief is that there's three social economic classes, low, middle, and high class. It's based upon how much money you make. Makes sense, right? Actually, the truth is those are just terms used by college professors and um, serves no one else except for the IRS and the collection of taxes. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm talking about social mobility within the United States. There's thermoclines, there's, there's levels. It's very easy to go down a level, very difficult to go up a level in social mobility in the United States. That's why you find a lot of people who are in these higher social economic classes sending their children to very expensive top tier social economic class colleges and universities. And that's why the theory of diversity exists in that mandating diversity rules within the United States will allow up, upward mobility for those that are stuck in the lower classes by their color or their race. Actually, it's by color. Let's, let, let's be honest by it. So um, we're going to talk about the, the nine, the, the nine uh, social economic classes. These are mandated by law surprises me that the rest nobody else is talking about this just me the top class is the oligarch class these are the super billionaires you might have heard of Elon Musk and Bill Gates but most of the super oligarchs are unknown and there's a bunch of them it's hard for me to pin down and exactly how much money would classify you to be a so super oligarch. But um, I like to think that anybody has anybody who has worth that can be measured in billions is a super oligarch. For tax purposes and for financial transfer purposes, there are set defined laws that prevent people from lower classes entering into this state. You have to not just accumulate a lot of money, but you have to do so carefully so as not to fall in peril due to the many laws that are set up there to um, protect the United States system. Um, Robert Kiyosaki uh, has discussed this uh, in a number of his videos and in his books in which he describes how it's very difficult from people of, of various um, means to enter into these realms of the super rich. Now, this oligarchy class is the class that owns the United States. They are the class that uh, directs all the social re-engineering. Uh, they are the class that uh, is in control of the climate change. They are the class that is in control of whether or not the United States fights wars and where it does fight the wars. These are the people. It's the oligarchy class within the United States. And this handful of people is the ones that's causing all the woes in the world and all the problems in the United States right now. They are it. They're the reasons. And they can be numbered in the low hundreds. Directly beneath this 
Oh, and for the most part, uh, the oligarchy class is a hidden class. They're very private. There's exceptions, but for the most part, you don't know who these people are because they do not want fame. They just want their fortune. And the more money, the better it is for them, apparently. The um, the class directly under them is the the wealthy class. Their wealth is measured in millions, not billions. They are um, what is portrayed as obtainable wealth throughout the United States. You too can become wealthy. Just look at this person who started his life by shining shoes, that kind of nonsense. It's there. This, this wealthy class can be found throughout the United States. They are a much larger group than the oligarchs are. They hold positions within the United States government, and almost all the senators are part of this group. Donald Trump is part of this group. He's not an oligarch, but he's a member of the wealthy class. These are the people who are supported above by the oligarch class. Any of these individuals who are in the wealthy class can lose their status, can lose their power at the whim of the oligarch class. So they listen to the oligarchs, which makes them perfect for running the government as puppets. Everybody in the oligarch class and the wealthy class protect their wealth, protect their properties. They do so initially out of preservation of lifestyle, but over time it has become the norm and evolves or devolves into a sense of entitled power. Both people of the oligarch and the wealthy class do not think like the vast majority of Americans or people in the world. They have become another creature altogether. They do not resemble you or me. The, cur the class directly under that is not really recognized as a class, which is pretty su surprising. That is because it's a variable class. It's known as the per diem class. These are technical specialists that make a large amount of money in a short period of time that may or may not work in between jobs. I did some work in this per diem class before. Per diem stands for a daily stupend, stupend that uh, you use to pay for hotels and meals and gas while you're in a remote location. It's a per diem class. Salaries in this area can go from the many thousands into the millions for a particular job. They're very specialized, and uh, many engineers fall into this um, realm, as well as some military people and others who have unique skills, knowledge, and abilities that happen to be needed right now. For instance, when Donald Trump wanted to counter Chinese 
great lead on 5G, the word was out that anybody who worked on any kind of 5G system would be get great uh, uh, salaries in the per diem world. This was also true in hypersonics, and I was approached by both. Um, and uh, I was rejected by both because I was living in China. And of course, they didn't want anybody associated with China in any way, shape, or form. And I also had other liabilities. The government mandates, like I said, a class society. And if you fall outside those rules, you're stuck in a class. But yeah, this is the per diem class. They move up and down between the middle class and the upper class or the wealthy, uh, depending upon their jobs and their situation and their personal needs. It's based on skill, but mandated by law. So that's the per diem class. Directly under the per diem class is, of course, the middle class. And the middle class, everybody knows what the middle class is. Define, the definition of a middle class is hard to put your thumb on, but, but I will do so. It's not living paycheck to paycheck. It's having money in savings enough money in savings that will enable a person and a family to live without fear. You have a house that's paid for or going to be paid for. You have transportation. You have no want for clothing. And you eat well. That's middle class. This definition of middle class is shrinking every year until it hardly exists in the United States now. If you are running paycheck to paycheck and you have very little in savings, you are not middle class. Okay, that's the low class. But wait, there's a class between middle class and low class. That's known as the gig class. These are people who drive Ubers or DD. Um, they are uh, the people that hold multiple jobs. This is also a variable class. And they are able to rise above the low social strata through work effort taking their time and their abilities and their knowledge to um, provide for their families. So this is the gig class. You work at gigs. Beneath the gig class is the low class. These are people who are renting homes who have uh, who work paycheck to paycheck. These people are used to be the bottom rung of society, but now it's the vast bulk of American society. These are workers who are, um, have a home, but are just scraping by and they live paycheck to paycheck. That's low class.
غم و چه خوشی دارم با زندگی فکر نکو که تناستی چون مسلمان نستی و با خداستی وقتی نداشتی شورت کسی نیست دقصید کل میبینه سر مطر پیسید نگاهی که تو را سعی میکنه کلش باطل است حرفای دشمن باش نکو کلش باطل است اما دی میگه که ما مرسی توستم در وقت خرابتم ما در پشت توستم او از کلش برک سردردی پشت قسیم از پشکو ایچ وقت نگردی وقت نداشتی شورت کسی نیست دقصید In order for these people in the low class for to try to attempt upward mobility, they often have to take out loans for school, loans for a car, loans for emergencies, and these loans put them in debt. So one of the characteristics of being in the low class is you're also in debt. If you have a large amount of personal and familial debt and you're living paycheck to paycheck, you are in the low poverty class of the United States. There's a subgroup within this group of people who also do not have a home. These are known as the homeless. You may be living in a car or in a tent. You are still in the low economic group. If you get a job, you can perhaps improve your life. And getting a job, you're on equal footing with everybody else. So this is the lowest rung of the American social strata that's recognized by everybody. But wait, there's two more subclasses. Crazy, huh? Yeah, it's two more classes. The first class is mandated by law. If you're a felon, you're going to have a hard time getting work. And um, if you do have a talented skill, getting registered and practicing using that skill is impossible. You could be a doctor, you get arrested, you become a felon, no more doctor for you. Same thing as engineering. Being a felon automatically zeroes out your education. It automatically zills out, zeroes out your businesses. Good luck trying to get a business license as a felon. 
good luck trying to work in the gaming industry as a felon. So these people are stuck in a realm beneath the, the, the low income social strata. These people are stuck. Upward mobility is particularly difficult for them. It can happen, but it's very, very hard. Very, very difficult. Most uh, live at the mercy of friends and family. Maybe they have a tree stump pulling business or they raise chickens on a family farm. Many are janitors or garbage collectors. For a while, myself, a rocket scientist, aerospace engineer with three degrees, was cleaning late at night as a janitor. I myself, who wanted to work in an animal shelter, was denied that. It's very difficult to find work if you're a felon. But wait, there's even a class that's even more restrictive than that. That's the sex offender class. Once you're in sex offender class, you become a non-entity. Non you are un intouchable, non-touchable. You can't exist. There are restrictions on what you can do, what you can own, where you can live. There are restrictions on top of restrictions, all to protect the community. So they say. Easy to get into. All it takes is a accusation. You're threatened with uh, 120 years in prison, or you can sign a piece of paper and they'll let you have three months of parole and then suddenly you're a sex offender if you think trying to get work as a felon is difficult try getting one as a sex offender felon your life is over your life is ruined ask any sociologist or psychiatrist and they will tell you that those branded with a sexual offender moniker have a very, very difficult time and that uh, they have no life. That being said, and I have covered this extensively, this is how the United States uh, retires people who've been involved in black operations spooks. That's how I got involved in the damn thing. But it's also a way of the powerful, the wealthy and the oligarchy to take care of their enemies. When I did time, I met many other sex offenders whose only crime was to anger somebody. So be very, very careful. But in any event, those are the nine classes. Upward mobility is extraordinarily difficult. Downward mobility can happen overnight. These nine social classes are not being taught in schools because there's no benefit derived from them. Uh, they'd only be taught if you were realistically studying what the United States is, but it serves no one's purpose. 
it's very important for the government and those in the upper classes to keep those beneath them into in states of ignorance. Keep them constantly treading water. Keep them constantly preoccupied and ignorant. That way they're very easily manipulated. And if you've been living in Iraq or completely saturated with the manipulations, you'll realize that the Americans are the most manipulated people on the planet. Living lies in social economic situations that are decaying by the minute and being told that it's not really all that bad compared to the rest of the world. And one of the reasons why American media has been shutting off contact between Russia and China and all the rest is because the rest of the world looks much, much, much better than what America does. And not just by one or two points, but by 15,000 points. There's no comparison. None whatsoever. And uh, so all America has right now is uh, a large military. And the American generals know that this military is not capable of active peer level fighting. By a determined army. Type it up, but it's really not capable at all. The generals know, the admirals know. They know what a shitstorm it'll be. It will be walking, walking into a war. If the United States walks into a war, it'll be a war that the United States may not crawl out of. It may just lie vanquished and destroyed. And all the generals know this. But the rest of the people don't. China's bad. Russia's bad. Everything's bad. Everything's terrible. Everything's gloomy. It's not. And I've documented this substantially. Why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about the social classes in the United States? <clears throat> because it's one such instance. One of multitudes of instances of where the obvious is obfuscated. You can't see it because you hear the lies repeated over and over again. America is not a land where everybody's equal and everybody can, can have a, a seat at the table and maybe anybody can become president. No, only a member of the wealthy class can become president. It's not the idea that one day if you work really hard, you're a super coder, and you invent some kind of tumbler or something that you can rise up to enter the wealthy or maybe even the oligarchy class if things go your ways. No, that's not possible. It's not realistic. The others won't let you in that their group. You will not be permitted to enter. And if you push, you will be sentenced to fall from grace in a most spectacular manner. So if you're in a class in the United States, the best you can hope for is to stay in that class, whatever class it may be. Now, through prudent planning, effort, you can rise out of that class, taking care of your skills, abilities, and discipline. A person who is in low class, living paycheck to paycheck, can, with planning, expertise, 
and a little bit of luck, because luck plays in all this. Use your freight forecast. Can rise out to become middle class. Likewise, that's true from middle class to per diem class, and per diem class, perhaps to wealthy class. The amount of effort to rise upward mobility is directly proportional to the class you're in. It's much harder to rise from low class to middle class than it is from middle class to high class. A lot of it has to do with thoughts, quantum effects of thoughts. A lot of it has to do with your template. A lot has to do with the social economic situation. So the further you fall down, the harder it is to get up. That's just the way it is, guys. <clears throat> Normally, I don't talk about the United States that much anymore. Um, it's like this abstract concept to me. It, was a land that used to be great and I grew up in, but everything that I liked about the United States no longer exists that I can see. I talk to people, friends, you know, what they're eating and everything. And so they might say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm cooking a steak outside or yeah, I made some soup. Nobody seems to have a regular family dinners that's being made every single day. They ask what they do and they say, well, you know, they went, did their job, they went to work and, you know, they mowed their grass and, and you know, took care of chores in their house. That's not really much of a life, is it? You go to cubicle to cubicle and you come home to maintain your cubicle. <clears throat> the news out of the West, or out of the States, is just insanity. Uh, the blockage of the news. Everybody is convinced, you know, the American people are convinced that, the, that uh, Russia is a cruel invader and uh, wants to uh, take over the Ukraine. The Ukraine, historically, is part of Russia. They speak Russian. Putin went in there on some assumptions um, that turned out to be erroneous uh, based on his welcoming as liberators from a Nazi regime, but um, and that the Ukraine was an independent country. Uh, it turns out to be a Ukraine surrogate nation under or a surrogate nation under the thumb of the United States uh, oligarchy. And uh, Zelensky is just a drug-addled, cocaine-addled puppet, comedian, actor. He was an actor who played a role as a president in a television show. So he was a perfect fit and pick for this role, much like what's in Taiwan. Two are identical. Hate to see what happens to Taiwan after China minces it up. China wants to be very nice about Taiwan, but um, they're not going to play around. They're not going to fuck around. China means business. When they get down to do something, they'll, they'll do it. They won't fuck around. Um, this stuff about this stuff about classes is very important to understand. To understand the kind of life you want and to understand what you're able to obtain, you have to understand where you are actually in your life and the limitations of what you actually have in your life.
you have to understand the pitfalls if you fall from that social economic class. And I will argue that the classes that are in the United States are very similar to the caste system in India. They're getting that way. And that is a real problem for the 33 or 330 million Americans. Is all lost? No, the United States has to change. And this period that we're witnessing is all a period of change. So you live with it and that's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? It's a good thing. So now you know your situation. If you're an American, you know where you are in the classes and you can see how you can move about these classes. You can see the problems and the necessity of keeping a clear, centered soul and consciousness, eating healthy, filling yourself with good environment and friends, avoiding the toxic, and avoiding angering the wrong people so that you could lose things in a heartbeat. With this, I will tack on the idea that major change doesn't happen. It does happen. You can have catastrophic change in your life. You can have a loved one die. You can lose everything you own. In a heartbeat, you could lose your job. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck, that is catastrophic. You could be fucked over by friends, treated by investors. There's not much you can do about it. So you have to be guarded. You have to husband your resources and your abilities. And you can't get caught up in the trivial. This is especially true with for Americans. Once America goes through this period of change and upset, Americans will fundamentally change. America may still exist. I don't know what it's like at the other end of the top side of the hump. It could be anything from uh, a pristine city on the hill with a uh, electronic prison planet, the worst of George Orwell or a complete collapse of everything that America stands for and sees. It could be anything in between. Hopefully it's something good. Be part of a community, do your best. And at that, guys, I want to end up with my basic words of advice. Be good, smile, make a difference in the world that you live in. Be good to dogs, cats, be helpful, be the Rufus, participate, don't be a spectator. And when the situation calls, take action. And at that guys, remember, Thank you.